Thank you, everyone, for joining. We have a big audience today, and this is our 21st, 20, yeah, 21st session now. And uh, starting from today, September and October, we're going to have some guest lectures. And uh, just to remind everyone, in case there's any newcomers, also uh, past attendees, you should know that everything, all the materials that we use can be found through the Hackaday project, Quantum Computing for Comics. We spend 30 minutes to an hour on topic, and we use quantum computing documentation from Microsoft and the katas as our exercises. So if you visit previous classes, the recordings are all up on Hackaday. You should be able to also follow some coding exercises. As I mentioned, Starting from today, we're going to have a series of very interesting topics from our guest lectures. So today we have Professor Taro Franz uh, talking about quantum cryptography. And later on, we'll have quantum tomography, uh, Q-sharp community project, q uh, quantum machine learning, quantum error correction, all these great topics. So you have been coming to the class uh, it's been, I have taught 20 classes, and if you follow most of it, you will be able to have the background needed for the, these specific topics. And it would help that uh, you took those classes uh, because um, these are all very specific topics that you would need the fundamentals for. So we're very much looking forward to all the guests. We have a really great lineup here. Um, so today we have Professor Franz. He's a professor at Harrisburg University of Science and Technology. And he also holds several meetups, including the Philadelphia Harrisburg Quantum Computing Meetup Group and the Quantum Appalooza uh, that he manages. <laughs> He's been coming to the class and it has been a great support of quantum computing education. So today he will be talking about uh, quantum cryptography and uh, talk about quantum key distribution and um, we'll see some examples of how Alice can send information to Bob without being eavesdropped. Um, so we did do two classes on source algorithms. So if you have taken those uh, this, today's class will also have some relations to that. Um, yeah, you know, a side note is that uh, people have been asking about the uh, comics that I've been drawing. So actually, right. uh, I just made that available. Uh, so you can buy it now. It's on Amazon. I have this proof copy here. Uh, so it's all printed out. Is You can use it as a companion book for this class. So. You can uh, watch the video and look at the comics there and take notes on the other side. So this is uh, my proof copy and next week I will have my author's copy. That's like uh, what you will see on the shelf. So yeah, uh, this is the on Amazon. You can find it now uh, in your respective Amazon stores. And I'll post the code in the chat later. So all of the information, including today's talk, will be recorded and uploaded on YouTube pretty much right away after the class. So if you miss anything, you can always go back there. Hackaday also started uploading all these um, classes so uh, with a little bit of edit. So if you, you can also check out their playlist. And yeah, and we're hoping to do some Q&A, and I will also be doing the drawing as Professor Franz gives the talk. So, yeah. I, <laughs> so I, I can't guarantee that uh, it will be in the state of publishing today, but um, I will use it as a note, and I hope the class here are also taking note. So drawing is my way of taking notes. That's what I'm going to do, and I can show people at the end of the class how that looks. Um, and then, yeah, next week we will have Professor Chris Ferry talking about quantum tomography, and we have Q-sharp 
community member Ralph coming the week after. So take a note at the time change next week, uh, but then the week after we are back on normal time. That's it. So let's welcome Professor Franz. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kitty, <laughs> for allowing me to not only get off of mute, but also grab control of the screen. It's an honor. Um, <laughs> And, and I'm I'm shocked you remember the comment from like a week or two ago about you doing some live drawings. I think I don't think anybody would be paying attention to me now. No, um, I want to I'm excited show people to why you won't. <laughs> oh, well, I was hoping you had the cam on your on your pencil or whatever your pen or whatever. You do. <laughs> and, and last thing before I get started here is. Uh, my daughter started a new job and I'm looking for some wardrobe or something nice to get her. Do you have any ideas of some nice wardrobe I could get my daughter for her new job present? Are you asking this to let me talk about my fashion brand? <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, tell us about your fashion brand, please. Uh, it's, it's called Art by Physicist. Uh, letting people know that this this is not set up. I am surprised that Professor Frost is asking about it. <laughs> but yeah, if anyone's interested, you can search uh, kittyyoung.com and that will pop up. You'll see some interesting science-inspired designs and uh, wearable technologies. I'm waiting to see someone walk down New York Times Square wearing one of those. <laughs> yes, that, you should let us. You have your daughter wear it. <laughs> She's in Philadelphia, but that's close enough. Well, she goes up to New York a lot. So, anyway, okay. So, I'm going to try to uh, open the share thing in a jiggy. And I think you can see a screen with quantum cryptography written on it. Yep. yep. All right. So, I'm going to be moving around here uh, different different modalities, so um, if anything gets weird, let me know. Uh, already I lost something. Oh, there it is. All right. So uh, what I'm going to try to do is, first of all, I, I'm a, I've been in working with classical computers for 46 years, to tell you the truth. Um, and um, about 18 months, 20 months ago, I, Shor's algorithm found me when I was working in the cybersecurity space, and I haven't looked back since. Uh, quantum is an exciting field. Uh, classical computing gets kind of dull after a while, believe it or not. Uh, but anyway, over those years, I basically came, came up with, you know, the model of uh, you know, computers, everybody thinks that computer technology is really, really difficult. And, you know, it really is not. Uh, what it is, it's a whole lot of little ideas, tiny ideas, actually, in some cases, piled on top of each other. So it looks like it's really complicated. And through the, that's where it gets complex it's because it's a whole bunch of little ideas. But if you take each idea and just look at it for what it for what it is, uh, bit by bit over time, uh, you'll start to understand the big picture. And I think quantum is the same thing. So here I'm going to talk about quantum cryptography, and it's really following up on on um, page or slide or illustration number 41, uh, which goes back to, I think, session 17 and 18 when, when Kitty was talking about RSA encryption, uh, which, which then led to uh, uh, Shor's algorithm and such. So what I'd like to do though, uh, one of the things that happens in quantum, because there's so much here, there's a lot of hand waiting uh, going on. I mean, uh, you know, we, we've only got a few minutes each Sunday uh, to cover a topic and, and, you know, Kitty sometimes does a deep dive uh, and then sometimes stays high level. So uh, what I'd like to do is, is uh, really kind of mix it up a little bit. And there's another, she gave an example, et cetera, of the RSA. But I'll mix it up a little high level, a little low level, and hopefully it, it, it floats your boat because we have quite a, we've got a mixed crowd here. Uh, so first of all, uh, when it comes to exchanging information in secret, uh, it's 
I think of it as a, a five uh, step process. First of all, you between two parties, you need to have an agreement of as to what your secrets are going to be, what your protocol is going to be, how are you going to communicate, and how are you going to communicate in secret. Then there's a, a next step, uh, because there's lots of ways that we can communicate in secret from Caesar's ciphers, as I think Kid, Kitty may have mentioned, which goes back hundreds of years, um, to things being developed today. And, and NIST is working on post-quantum cryptography. So there's quite a, a variety of, of techniques for, for uh, sharing information in secret between two and sometimes more parties. The second thing is once you get an agreement generally, and this is a still generalization, is uh, the parties need to develop some sort of key, some sort of secret secret uh, compass or what have you, some sort of secret between them. And then once that those keys are generated, uh, uh, they need to be distributed. Uh, they need to be sent from Alice to Bob and Bob to Alice and so on. And then you have the steps of encryption and decryption. And let me just bring this home a little bit. Uh, most of you probably don't realize that when you go to a, a website nowadays, I think it's like 70 plus percent of websites now use HTTPS. It's up there. Well, I guess you'll normally see it as a little lock up on your browser uh, up near the URL. Uh, and that, that is HTTP with a uh, uh, security protocol, a greeted security protocol called SSL TLS. And this is really, uh, this is the, when you first, when you first reach a website, uh, there's this handshaking process going on and it goes on very, very quickly, thank goodness. Uh, and you don't even realize it, but your, your laptop uh, sends a hello message to the, to the website. Uh, and with that hello message, your laptop gives a list of protocols that your laptop is prepared to use uh, for secret uh, information exchange. And the website on the other side, on the server side, takes a look at the list that your client can communicate with and selects uh, one of those uh, protocols and then sends back the, okay, here's the deal. This is the protocol we'll use. And that's over here in the, this part here. And so there's this dialogue that goes on very quickly because there's a whole bunch of different ways uh, to, to encrypt your data and uh, uh, keep it secret. And so this happens very, very quickly every time you go to effect, effectively a new web page. Another bit of the background is cryptography uh, has uh, two basic food groups, if you will. One is where uh, you have a symmetric key where Alice and Bob uh, basically use the same key. And then there's uh, asymmetric, which is where there's a different key uh, for uh, the encryption and de decryption, et cetera. And uh, so typically, Caesar back in the day uh, used what's called the, cy the Caesar cipher, and that's where uh, they just shifted uh, characters in the alphabet. So if you had uh, uh, ABC, they would uh, shift it by, let's say, uh, three or four uh, letters, and ABC would be would come out as XYZ, et cetera. I think you're most of you are fairly uh, familiar with that. So let me get to a little bit of detail here. Let's step back a bit, and I'll pull out the magic whiteboard because I want to compete with, uh, I want to compete with uh, Kitty on some drawings here, so I'm gonna try. Um, so let's get down into the real nitty gritty of what goes on. So what if I wanted to send the message, com the word comic uh, from Alice to Bob? Well, let's remove some of that magic. First of all, we don't really send characters, COM and all that. And I don't like to take shortcuts 
when doing stuff like this. So I'm going to show you exactly what I do. Even looking up the websites. So what the word comic really looks like. Now I'll stick this over here. This over here. When we send it through the internet. It's like the three planet problem here. I got three things going on. There we go. All right. So, and we'll say that that's a little c, lowercase c. So, over here, this is this is really what gets transferred over the internet. We call it data and data in uh, in transit. So. So the C becomes one or zero, one, one, zero, uh, zero, zero, one, one, and that's a C. And the O, I'll look up an O, becomes a, uh, let me see, zero, one, one, zero, oh, that's convenient, one, 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 one. All right, so that's really the first abstraction. A lot of people think that the letter C and O actually go through the airwaves, and no, that's not that's not exactly right. It's a series of of zeros and ones, ons and off, bits and bytes, three volts and five volts, etc. So this is, and I'll just use C and O, but I'll just boil it down to just use C because I don't want to be drawing all day. So if I wanted to send it a C from Alice to Bob, this is what would get sent. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Now, clearly, if I sent that uh, through uh, the internet, Eve would be able to decipher that. She would be able to say, oh, well, that's a C because I can just look it up in this table. So what if I put a, what if I took this code here and put a key against it? I processed it with a key. And therefore, uh, let me see. So one, one, zero. What would actually be sent over the wires would be this zero one one zero one one zero one. And if I look this up over here, zero one one zero one one zero one, it would be a small m. So now the cool thing is if I take this same key, this guy up here. And did the same process it on again. And I'll explain the process in a second. When I decrypt, decrypt with the same key. Then I get the C again. So back over here. And it's this guy right here. So what what algorithm, what what rules did I use here? And this is just an example. I used what's called XOR, exclusive OR. And XOR is where if you have a uh, if you have two inputs, uh, if so, the result would be as a one. If there is only one 
one in A or B. So if I had A, if I had zero and zero, the result in an exclusive or would be a zero. If I had a one and a zero with exclusive or, I would have one, which means that there's only one one. If it was zero and one, I would end up with a one. If it was one and one, what would you get? The result would be zero because the rule is if there's only one uh, one in the pair, then it's the result is a one. If there's no ones in the pair, the result is a zero. And if there's both of them are one, then it's a zero. So what I basically did was use XOR here. But so the key here is you can see, hopefully, at the minute detail of how I can take a message, in this case, just a single character C, apply a key to it with some Quantum rule. Cryptography. Um, I can get a different character from that, M in this case. And I use the same key, this is identical here, with the same rule. Again, then I get the original uh, message. All right, now that's, it's, that's as simple as it gets. And that's all that's really going on. So the key here is this guy right here. Right? Literally, the key. So if I just look at the key, and it doesn't matter what I have now because I'm not going to, I'll get away from that example. Uh, zero, 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 one, 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 zero. And I could give any key here and do this process and it will work. Uh, so, in quantum cryptography, one of the primary use cases of um, quantum uh, mechanics and all the quantum uh, features is sharing this key uh, between Alice and Bob. Because remember, one of the steps is uh, the key distribution. And that's really one of the main um, use cases for uh, quantum. And so how does Alice and Bob, uh, how can they share this key? Well, in quantum, we have a, a, a real important feature called the no cloning. I guess it's a theorem. Uh, where uh, we are going to take advantage of that. And this means you basically can't copy uh, information. So if, if Alice is here and Bob is here and Eve is here, in classical, if Alice sends uh, a, zero, a zero to Bob and Eve takes it, Eve can copy the zero, stash, stick it over here, and then pass on the zero to Bob and Bob would never know what happened. Well, with the no cloning theorem, if Alice sends a zero, Eve intercepts that zero, Eve looks at that. Eve basically will, will try to send, will try to copy it. So Eve will know it's a zero. But the thing is, Eve cannot copy it. And so what Eve has to do is randomly send a zero or one to Bob. Eve can't do like in the classical case with the classical computing uh, uh, paradigm, she can't make a copy of it. So if she takes what Alice sent, sure, she knows that it's a zero, uh, but what she has to pass on to Bob is either a zero or, or a one. Uh, she can't just copy it. 
And that is the essence of, of uh, what quantum key distribution takes advantage of. Eve cannot simply copy this state here and send it to Bob. Now you'd say to yourself, OK, well, it doesn't seem too difficult to do that. I mean, if she knows it's an if he or she knows it's a if Eve knows it's a zero, well, then just send a zero to Bob. Well, it's not quite that straightforward. So. Uh, any any questions or anything like that at this point? Comments? Before I get into the fun stuff. It's OK to interrupt at any time. All right. So let's step back for a second. Imagine I had a machine. Let's just call it. A. I better I better not do that because you might get you might get it confused with. With Alice. Let's just call it. Little A, so it's a machine. And if I put in. Uh, a a value into A. A will repeat that value like that. If I put in a one to A, A will simply do that. Now let's say I had another machine, B, and I put in a zero there, and out comes a zero with a B, and I put in a one here, Oops, it's a B, little B. And I get a one with a little B. These are little Bs here. Now, however, if I have A here and I put in a zero B, A will 50% of the time spit out a zero A. And 50% of the time. A one A. And ditto would be. Right, so. So let me just finish A. So if I put in a one B here. Into little A into machine A 50% of the time. It'll come out a zero A and 50% of the time. It'll come out of one B, a one A, and so B is essentially the same thing. So, essentially, if 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 you put in like a raw value in here, it'll spit it out with the A on it. But if you if you put in a value from the other machine, and the same holds true with B, from the other machine, it it, it can't quite read it properly. So. What it will do is it'll randomly say it's a zero or randomly say it's a one. All right, and B's B's got the same issue. Zero A. Um, and so on. Whoops, that's a one A. See, this is why we should be watching Kitty draw. All right, so let's say Alice has uh, wants to send this key. Uh, what is it? Zero 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 one 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 zero. Zero 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 zero. One, 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 zero. Alice wants to send this to Bob. So what Alice does, she randomly chooses between machine A and B. So let's say uh, she'll do A here, B here, A, A, B, A, A, B, just randomly. 
So she'll kick out here. Uh, let me see how to draw this. So, so we got a zero A followed by a, a zero B followed by a zero A followed by a, and I'm doing this backwards, right? Because she'll send these out first. Um, and then a zero A and then a one B, a one A, a one A and a zero B. So now Bob, I guess I can go to full screen here. So she sends this set of values to Bob and Bob's over here. Let's say um, Bob decides, well, I'm going to um, read these strings using machine A, then I'm going to use machine B, and then I'll use A, and then A, and then A, and then B, and then A, and then, I don't know, B. Because remember, Bob and Alice aren't talking. They're only communicating with this stuff here. So Bob uses A. Uh, let me see what's the best way to do this. Um, so if Bob uses A and sees it, so he'll get a, a zero, right? Here he's going to use machine B for the next one. And so he'll correctly get a zero. Nice. Here he uses A. Oh, wow. That was an accident. Oh, well. So he correctly gets the first four bits correct. And then here he has a 1B coming off using machine A. Now remember over here, a 1B with machine A means there's a 50% chance he'll get a, a 1A or, uh, or a zero. So let's say he gets um, uh, a one. And here, let's say he's getting 1A, machine B. All right, well, he's got a 50-50 chance. So let's say here he gets a zero. Uh, gets a 1A here, reads it with machine A randomly. So that's a correct one. And then here he gets a zero B and a correct correctly because it's the same machine. And he doesn't know what machine this came from. He gets that right there. So you see, the the string matches, but right here, and he, and he doesn't know what Alice what Alice sent. So, you know, he doesn't know what machine. Alice's numbers came from. He knows the numbers, but not what machine they came from. So what Bob then does, sends back the list of machines he used. So he sends um, A, B, A, 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 B, A, B. He sends this list back to Alice. Alice compares it to her list. So Alice, remember, she knows what she sent. She knows what Bob, um, machines Bob used. So she knows that Bob is probably wrong. Uh, let me see. Did I get this right, A, B. She knows that Bob is going to be correct with these values, but these two, uh, he's got a a 50% chance of being incorrect with each one of those. All right, so Alice sends back, okay, Bob, 
uh, you are incorrect on one, two, three, four, number five, and number six. So Bob then says, all right, well, these I'm going to throw away. And therefore, Bob knows that these values are correct. So, what if Eve's in the picture? If Eve was in here, this is where the drawing gets kind of difficult. Ooh, purple. Goodness, let me see here. Oh, here we go. I need to take some lessons from Kitty here. On there we go. Okay, so here's Eve. Now keep in mind, if Eve intercepted this, the A zero or zero A zero B and so on, she can. She only has. Uh, you know, she's going to select, uh, let's say, B, A, B, A, just randomly. I'm going to just keep it simple. And so when she gets the zero A, uh, she's got a 50% chance of it being right or not. So she has to say, OK, well, that's a zero. But she doesn't know that. And here, uh, that's a 50% chance of being a one. Now here, she'll be correct, but these have a 50% chance of being incorrect. Here, she measured with the same one. Here, she measured with the same one, so that's correct. Here, she, uh, so these are correct. This one's wrong here, possibly. So 50% chance of being wrong, remember? And then uh, A, so here, uh, that's a 50% chance of being wrong. So now Eve needs to send to make sure Bob gets something. What does she send? She sends a zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero. Now remember what Bob does. So Bob takes a look at this. And these should be uh, A, B, a, B, A, 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 B, because Eve doesn't know what Alice sent. So Bob now takes this, all right? Uh, that's an A, so that's a zero. That's correct. Got a B, that one's it's the same. Uh-oh, that one's the same here. Uh, so it's a zero B. Bob's using machine A. So there's a 50% chance uh, that it's correct. Here's a one, and from machine A, I don't know if you can see it, I wrote pretty small here. Uh, so machine B, that's an A, so there's a 50% chance that's correct. This one matches and zero. So now, Keep in mind, Alice and Bob don't know that Eve exists. Bob sends back um, the string of, um, let me see where are we? So he sends back the string here that he used, and Alice takes his values thinking that these are correct here. And what she knows that this would be a one and this one would be a one. 
Bob sends part of his solution also. In fact, I'll I'll send Eve's version. When E when Alice sees this mistake here, they have now discovered that Eve is listening. So in trying to keep this short, boy, time flies when you're having a great time. When Eve try, is listening to this exchange, Eve introduces error that goes beyond the error that Alice and Bob would expect. So Alice would expect Bob to be wrong uh, if you do the math, to be wrong 75% of the time. If E's involved, or to be, I'm sorry, to be correct 75% of the time because of this uh, uh, translation going on here. If that, if this value is becomes less than 75%, let's say 63%, Alice will know instantly that Bob is, is and, and their com and Alice and Bob's conversation is being watched by Eve. Because the correct rate is below what it should be, which is 75%, give or take a few percentage points. And this is not over, you know, eight qubits here. This is over, you know, a thousand qubits, let's say. Uh, so, you know, the the difference will, will be noticed. So, in short, that's really what quantum key distribution is all about. Is when they reconcile, they think of it as these two machines that process the data and when they reconcile if the error rate is greater than expected then they know eve is listening well, let me take this from the notion of machines to the physics And this is really Kitty's department more than mine. Uh, but the what's being exchanged here are protons. And protons, cool no, enough. Very coolly enough. Uh, let me see. I think I got something in the slide here. Might be good. I mean. <clears throat> If you need to use a pattern, I'll take one. OK. So protons essentially uh, have two ways of uh, what are called two bases. They have a horizontal and vertical basis. And they have a, um, a left and right basis or a diagonal basis. This is called rectilinear basis, and this is called uh, a diagonal basis. So you could think of these two bases as the machine, machine A and machine B. And if you have a proton coming along, you know, I, it will be in a waveform that is either that is both horizontal and vertical and uh, diagonal, left and right, mixed. Photon, not proton. Oops, thank you. <laughs> 
See, I told you this is my this is not my neighborhood here. Um, yeah, I got to write it down so I remember. Proton, right? All right, I'll, I'll take silence is good. Anyway, photon, so, photon, <laughs> photon. See, photon. like photograph. Yeah, photon. Yeah. All right. See now you now you now I'm out of my range here. So I recognize the voice. Um, so so it's just like a pair of sunglasses. They were called polarized sunglasses. So that when you, if I had a filter, a polarizing polarizing filter here, uh, this will block the the vertical. Um, waves, but allow the horizontal to, I'm sorry, the, it'll block the horizontal, right? But let the vertical waves come through. So you could think of this as, let's say, machine A again. And it's either vertical or horizontal, and that could be either a one or zero. Now, if I had a different polarizing, polarization filter or polarizing filter, and it was on the diagonal, consider, think of that as machine B, and it will let only left or right one of these through, which is either the zero or one. So that is essentially how quantum key distribution works. And what's interesting here is that if you go back to good old plain old cryptography, when you have a message and you have uh, a, a keypad or a key value that's used once only. So if I had this as my key, and I use it once, according to one of the gurus, Claude Shannon, Shannon is that this is impossible to beat. And so using this quantum key distribution technique, you have a one-time pad that matches the data. So you, let's say you had uh, a 1,000 bytes or a 1,000 bits of data. You would have a quantum key of 1,000 bits uh, qubits paired up with that, and those qubits are this key here, just as I described using the two machines or uh, the uh, photons. So I think that's enough for now. Uh, that should give you a basis for, there's plenty of videos out there, plenty of writing about uh, what I described is called BB84. So it's my belief that uh, with what I discussed here, you should be able to watch a BB84 video and uh, follow along. They typically start with the physics, uh, but what I decided to try to do here is start with the logic behind it and then get into the physics, which is where protons, photons, you know, I can get that all mixed up. Uh, that's really, I can't believe it's already 320. Uh, I could go on and on, um, but that's basically the gist of what's called BB84. Uh, Charles Bennett, by the way, is still at IBM. 
and he has a few talks out there to be well worth watching. Uh, there's also a uh, a revised version called B. I think it's 92, uh, where instead of uh, he's use instead of using uh, both bases, that's these guys here, or both machines. Uh, it's a technique that actually just use, utilizes uh, one of the machines, either the horizontal, vertical, uh, the rectilinear, or the uh, diagonal basis here, or filter. Uh, let me just end with this uh, slide here. One way to get your head around this, uh, finally, uh, and I have the stuff at the, at the office at the campus, but I haven't been there in six months, so I just have to use some pictures here. Imagine I have two pairs of sunglasses, one here, one here, and I put them on top of one another, and I turn them at a diagonal, uh, make them perpendicular to one another. Uh, what I'll see is zero light here. Okay, it'll block all the light. So this is, this is think of it as a filter going like, like this on the bottom, and then the one on the top goes like this. So what do you get? You get no light. Now imagine I take a third filter. Let's call the third filter Eve. And I insert it between these two filters here. You'll see I'll get some light. So this is a physical real world example of uh, you know, this this technique in operation with a man in the middle here affecting the outcome. Uh, I, I should not, you know, if Eve was not there, I would have complete darkness. But if I take a polarizing filter and stick it between uh, these two filters here, these two pairs of sunglasses, uh, actually I'll have, and this is between, this is not on top or behind it, it's in between these two, I'll actually have more light coming out than if I only had the two. And that's it from here, way over time as usual. Any questions, comments? I tried to compete with uh, Kitty on the drawing. I don't know if I even came close. Not really compete. Thank you for, for doing this. Your drawing makes it much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much the same as what you did. I have to tidy it up and um, I can probably show it, put it into a one page or two pages next week. <laughs>